How are you? Good, Joe. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for coming to check out this all electric building. So, thank you for coming out today to check this out. Uh, I do want to introduce you to the builder of this house. Hey, my nice call. Good to meet you. So, how did how did you get started on all this? And like, yeah, what was the motivation? About eight or nine years ago, we were building LEED certified homes, and we were building super energy efficient homes, but with gas lines. I read a book about climate change, realized we have to stop burning fossil fuels as soon as possible. Why are we building these green homes with gas? And we tried to, we built a home with solar panels and all electric and it went great. And here we go. I think that's the question, right? So if you're, if you're looking at your existing home and trying to identify all those things, where do you even start? There's a, a group called BPI that is a nonprofit that certifies energy raters. And these folks come into your house, they'll do a blower door test in your house, they'll identify air leaks, they'll identify areas with poor insulation, and that'll help create a roadmap for you to decarbonize that house. When I say decarbonize, is that's what we're trying to do, is we're, we're trying to lower the amount of energy that building needs through insulation and air sealing. And then we're also trying to move our systems away from fossil fuel systems to electric systems. What are, what are other examples of things that are different uh, as relates to how you're bringing heat in? Because you talked to insulation. Right. So furnaces have all kinds of sensors in them to help shut them down in the event that there's carbon monoxide being produced. They uh, have igniters. Heat pumps don't have that complexity. We take heat from the outside air that fan draws the heat over a coil. We extract heat, even from cold air. This system can extract heat from air temperatures down to negative 17 degrees. And we move that heat into the building. During that polar vortex uh, that we had a couple weeks ago when it was negative 15, my house was very comfortable. This to me looks pretty much like any kitchen, right? Yeah. So if you want to walk us through for folks to see kind of what the bells and whistles are and like some of the benefit. Yeah, and so I think we're all kind of at this point used to Energy Star and just sort of some of the ratings, the energy guides you see in appliances that show how much it costs per year. You should still pay attention to those labels when you go appliance shopping. This is not your grandmother's electric cooktop. This is a magnetic cooktop. So it effectively has two magnetic coils inside each burner and those, the alternating current gets pumped through it and it actually grabs the iron molecules inside your cookware and creates friction, heating up only the pot. So the surface itself stays cold. Key benefit to that, it doesn't burn your food like an old, old electric cooktop and it's much more precise than a gas cooktop. Your average question that I was going to ask is, uh, you know, is it effective? What's the difference from your regular water heater? Yeah. So this is actually the easiest thing a homeowner could do, right? Because you, everybody has a water heater. Uh, this unit doesn't use gas, it uses electricity. Uh, and there's a heat pump on the top here that takes heat from inside this room and moves it into the water tank. So it uses about half the power of a tankless electric water heater and cost about half as much to run as a uh, tanked gas water heater. So it's a very efficient way to make hot water at home using electricity. Great. I mean, everything to me sounds like it's saving money, not only conserving energy, but conserving people's pockets. Well, and, and this is just an easy swap. You can buy this at a home center and with the same effort it takes to replace your gas water heater, replace it with this. Uh, we traditionally dry our clothes with gas. Uh, some folks have an electric clothes dryer. Um, electric clothes dryers, I like clothes dryers. They get red hot, they what? This is a whole different type of clothes dryer, even though it doesn't look like it. Sure, sure. This is a heat pump condensing dryer. So what does that mean? It takes heat from inside the room and moves it into the drum. And once it's in the drum, it largely stays there. So it doesn't have to continuously run. Right. because we don't vent to the outside. 
All we're doing here is dehumidifying your clothes. So we're using heat to release the moisture in your clothes. That warm air circulates in the unit. There's a cold coil in here mm -hmm. that basically condenses the moisture inside that hot air and pumps it into the plumbing system. So what does that look like when it's working? Like, it, does it look the same thing like a dryer would look like? Or is it yeah, it, it literally has zero difference right. from your dryer. So uh, this is, again, you know, one of the beautiful things about uh, changing your water heater, changing your clothes dryer, and um, just changing your heating and cooling system to heat pump based systems, there's no emotional effect on your life, right? You right. know, everything's the same. How does that just that's have to right. be conserving more? That's right. There's no, there's no change in what you have to do. So you should install solar uh, once you get to a point where you're using enough energy. So if you have an EV or if your house is all electric, now it's a good time to install solar, right? And this here is an inverter. So what we're doing is we're taking power from the roof, that power is coming down in DC form. There's a transformer in here that converts it to AC. From here, it goes to the panel. And then if I look at our panel, there's a little so solar photovoltaic breaker right here. And that power is flowing into the panel. If it's not used by the panel, then it goes back to the grid through the meter and effectively spins the meter backwards. Got it. H how much did you say a month again? One seven, 17. Got it. It's good. It's good to know that because I don't know anyone else seeing that kind of Well, cost. and if you don't have a gas bill and you have a $17 a month power bill, I, I think that's a little bit of an economic advantage for a house like this. Yeah, I mean, it's more than, reason, it's more than enough reason to not only look for houses like this or find ways to retrofit just because the cost savings alone that's make right. it worth it. That's right. One of the biggest challenges an old house has is typically older electric panels. Um, so one of the things in the Inflation Reduction Act is when you do uh, upgrade to electrical appliances, they cover some of the work that's going to take to allow your house to operate that appliance. So it's a good time to upgrade your electrical service. This is a 200 amp panel. Uh, 200 amps means we have a lot more power to power different systems in the house versus a typical house which is going to have a 100 amp panel. Do the utility companies have a part to play? Yep. So ComEd offers rebates on a lot of this equipment as well for their insurers. So you should just reach out to them direct. I wish that there was more articulation of the wonderful future that we could all have with super low energy cost. If you really imagine what you could do in our world with really cheap energy all across the planet, it would be you know, amazingly better for everybody.